here for meeting me once again in this little corner of the internet. My name is Jess. How are you? Um, hello. How are you? I'm glad you're here once again. I'm going to start this off by saying I'm standing in my truth and I'm rebuking what I said that this isn't a podcast and I'm going to make it a podcast. I'm going to make it at least podcast-esque for now because genuinely, why not? Um, I found it a little bit silly to slap on that label prematurely. I also found it a little bit self-indulgent and narcissistic that I was like making something like a podcast when the topic and the narrator and like the subject at hand would kind of just be centered around one thing, which is me. But once again, if I think we're in an age where like it means such a different thing to be a creator than it was like 10 years ago, if your favorite youtuber from 10 years ago was making a podcast you'd be like why because a podcast is something that's so that's supposed to be informative or or whatever um but i deeply resonate with just like kind of like having a favorite person on the internet and wanting to hear them quote unquote yap sorry there's someone yelling outside my window because it's new york by me um so i don't care i'm living in my truth i genuinely rack up like 10 hours a week minimum just talking to myself talking about nothing so why not turn on that stupid camera girl and whatever so yeah this is it's not not a podcast that's what i will say i want to make this a little bit more structured which is coming tba but whatever also uh, i made a community post a few days ago asking for video ideas and i noticed that a few people were like i know it's not a podcast but you know which i appreciate um adhering to this little label slash rule that i put on anyway hi how are you there are just a few new people watching my name is jess i'm 25 i have a big fat i have a big fat i have a million dollars in the bank and everyone loves me How's your day going? Um, I, okay, also, can you believe that YouTube demonetized my What's My Bag video because I said the word see you next Tuesday? So much for free speech. Are you joking me? Um, like, what the heck? Oh, 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 so I can't call my bag. I called it, I actually called it T because it is and it was. But there are literally uh, uh, there are literally videos online right now that you can look up. I'm sure they're not even age restricted. Of erect <laughs> erect <laughs> showcasing and showing you how to put on a condom, but YouTube keeps them up because oh they're educational. Please, girl. Oh oh boo. Oh please. That was annoying. Like hello YouTube. I'm an adult woman. My content is not for children. If you are under the age of 21 watching this. That's okay. If you and I were to go out and get a drink, you could get, um, can I suggest a delicious sparkling cold ginger ale? May I suggest a shrine tumble? Those are yummy. May I suggest a Sprite even? Um, if you're under the age of 18 watching, you're pushing it, you are. And if you're under the age of 16, I would say get out now, but that's kind of sweet. I think I'm in, I think I'm, I think I'm imparting and bestowing a large amount of wisdom. And I'm really surprised and flattered that you choose to spend your teenage time here. Oh my God, I like the color on this sister. Um, what should I take this time to bestow upon you? Lie, 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 cheat, steal, don't get married, follow your dreams, whatever those are, even if you don't know what they are right now, it'll come to you one day. Um, lie, did I mention lie? Uh, go steal a car <laughs> and an elderly woman's wallet and uh, commit social security fraud. Yeah, that's what I'm going to tell you. Um, I have a camera right here. <laughs> We're upgrading. We're going to camera right now. This is crazy work. We're going to production quality on this podcast. That's not a, not a podcast, but it's not yet a fully podcast. Uh, primarily because I like this camera. I think it's really cool. I want to utilize it more, but also I hate this camera. Like really, really bad. I did my hair so poorly. There's crochet under here and I literally have plateau head. Like that's kind of humiliating. I gotta stop cord. I, I gotta stop cutting corners when I do my hair. Either like fully commit to it or just shell out that 200 to go get your hair done every month.
like genuinely babe what's going on here i do have to say in the spirit of full transparency trigger warning this part is depressing like genuinely and it is about depression and mental health i'm sorry oh oh oh, oh i'm so sorry um we just have to get over we have to get through the yucky stuff first and then it's fun 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 town and then we can chat and giggle and talk about whatever um i know this is not at all a set but i think of my room like a set and i want to get like the tiniest little tv um because I, I i i really like the idea of like a little tv and i wanted to play strawberry shortcake in the corner i'm a little bit jaded as of right now in every sense of the word but mainly physically because i i filmed this video yesterday yes i did roll the footage yes i did and it's a bunch of like i used the wrong sd card i used a corrupted sd card and la 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 so we're filming it again we're already at 10 minutes though and i don't want this to be a yap fest so this is kind of not related but i wrote here for some reason and i want to express out of frustration that i never have a normal period anymore ever since i turned 25 years old like okay one thing i do know that i have is pcos my periods were more so very physically strenuous and laborious on me i had and i still do have really bad symptoms and things like that but ever since i turned 25 there's been sort of a switch and that those like hardships that were once on my body have now become more mental and my period and also like the week before my period is the genuinely the worst two weeks of my life i am so emotional and like the erratic and i genuinely feel like crazy and insane and i'm not enjoying it i <laughs> it's not time um i don't like it okay i genuinely do not like it sorry we're gonna have to talk over over the train but it's annoying like i, I really 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 don't like it um it's just like so mentally taxing and i don't know how i'm supposed to go through every single month like a normal human being i would kind of just rather the physical symptoms rather than the mental because i can power through a physical symptom a mental comes a little less a little more tricky uh i cried while making these notes yesterday and i wrote here that i hope i don't do that on camera not because it's hashtag cringe but because i've kind of not okay not because it's hashtag cringe i have relinquished that part of my brain that thinks things are cringe i've definitely killed that part of cringe in myself uh and as someone who will first and foremost always identify as a consumer on the internet rather than a creator i think it's vulnerable and i think it's very brave when a creator cries uh i think of someone like enya crying on camera with the video updates that she would do in the past of like just something happening or her mother passing and i find that very very admirable but the reason why i don't want to cry is because i am an ugly cryer <laughs> yeah no no like a hideous hideous crier and unfortunately because i don't cry often when i do cry like finally my body kind of treats it as vomiting and it's like so something that my like my body's like pushing out and genuinely hey it's not pretty I get it from my mom. No offense. That is my girl. She's gorgeous. I grew up with, like, unfortunately, trademark hot mom. Um, but she's an ugly crier. Love you, girl. I am always sad in the summer. Summertime sadness is, unfortunately, something that plagues me greatly. Sorry, my camera is, uh, the cannon's about to die. Summertime sadness is something that unfortunately plagues me greatly, and I already knew this, I know a lot about myself, but what brought this on is that recently I watched my old YouTube videos. I don't really think anyone knows this because I have privated them, but I've been doing YouTube on and off since I was 16 years old. I got the green light from my parents, I wanted to do YouTube so badly, I loved making videos, I loved the thought of making, you know, videos, and I got the green light from my parents, which is really surprising because they were really strict at the time and i didn't think that they would let me make them but i i got it and i started and i was watching my old videos back my very first video is a everyday makeup routine i was 17 years old and i don't know who that person is i like i 
I, in the sense that like, I don't remember anything about that person. I found it very like cute and endearing. And I was like, whoa, it looked so different at the time. And then I tried to get into the headspace of 17 year old Jess and what were my passions and what, I, and what was I into and how did I spend day to day and what was important to me. And I do remember that fortunately through journaling and things like that. And I do remember what was important to me just going to college. I, I was like, I had tunnel vision. I wanted to go to college. I wanted to get out of my house. I was miserable. And I kind of saw it as a time to figuratively shed that layer of skin and like all that sadness that I had and hashtag be myself in college. Hey, spoiler alert, didn't happen. <laughs> I unfortunately, I blocked out so many memories in college, of college and of high school and of like my formative years and my teenagehood. Um, and I realized that I've only been off a- a- autopilot for like the last four years, like since I turned 20. And there were a few like, insignificant and very sweet memories i'd have like my dad clean my room for me and because he was just always like a very like a like a neat freak and i would get a little bit embarrassed like he'd clean my room for me and whatever but i i was like looking at myself and i was like who genuinely who is this person i don't know who this is like uh it was like looking at a stranger and it's really unfortunate for me. I was looking at my high school videos and I was looking at college, which unfortunately was an even more like very saddening time. And I think that's because college was so unfulfilling for me. Like I, like, I, I, I didn't do anything. I was so hollow. I was so empty and I was filled with so, so much emptiness and loneliness and sadness. Um, and I did what I figured at the time was best for me, which was to self-isolate and to self-soothe. But that didn't even really help. It kind of made more damage than it did help. And when I was thinking about it and I was watching those videos, I came to a very sombering thought that, or is, it, is the word sobering? I don't know. That my mental health has taken so much from me. It really has. And it's unfortunate, but it's true. Um, like, so much from me, so much from me. And it's gotten better. And I always uh, stray away from labeling and self-categorization because I think it does more harm than good, especially when you haven't gotten anything that's clinical or professional like a diagnosis. But what I do know is that, especially during that time and even now, unfortunately, each day is like such a fight. And it takes so much intention and care to be a person. Not even like to be happy, but just to be a person. And like I, I really wish that wasn't the case to be a person who can like get up and just like carry out the most basic functions. And I thought somewhere would come and I thought I would kind of figuratively shed this skin, this 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 layer of skin that had all the dirt and the grime and the neglect and the apathy and the gluttony and the neglect and the self-loathing that came from i guess like the first few months of the year and i would come out fresh and new but i didn't (laughs) i didn't oh my god oh my god no i did not i actually really really didn't um I'm just doing that now, which is really unfortunate. Um, I'm not necessarily regretful. I'm not, I would say I am someone who knows how to move on. But when I reflect, I just kind of find it unfortunate. That's it. I find it unfortunate. I really don't need anyone to comment that, like, I should have hashtag no regrets and move forward. Hey, I know that. It's, it's, it's just unfortunate. That's it. I just kind of find it unfortunate. I, uh, it's taken me 25 years to figure out that, I don't know, I guess, like, these things just take a little bit more intention, they take so much intention, they take so much intention, it takes a lot of intention and care and structure for me to be a person that is happy and operating normally, and, uh, I think it took a lot of time for me to realize that because I was in denial. I think when I have these thought processes and notions and whatever else about love or life or mental health or my characteristics, my, my, my personal life or whatever, genuinely whatever, 
I have such a hard time acknowledging that they're not hashtag normal pilled. I have no problem validating myself and affirming myself, but it's just, I just had a hard time coming to terms that I was a little bit regretful about my college years and how I spent time in college and that it's not normal to spend a time that's supposed to be filled of it's filled with exploration and like super social and fun full full of parties and like and like sex and like gore and sex just completely friendless and engaging in hey guys nothing of the sort it's not normal I'm it's not unusual I but it's it's not like normal which I'm always in denial there's one recently that I've had that I kind of can't get into it's because it's TMI but it sucks not being normal pilled ever since my ever since my roommate and I have started saying this thing we've been saying like I just want to be normal which just means like I want to experience what like normal girls experience I can't get it out of my head I can't get it out of my head I can't get it out of my head uh and i think i've been into now because as bad as i can get as low as my lows can get i've always had the the knowledge within myself and the self-assurance that i can snap back and i can get up and i can get back to my life and my friends and my job and my passion and almost act as if it never even happened but i can't I can't, especially when those things take a lot of like effort and intention from me. And, and it's also just because like if I, I actually don't even know what I'm saying here, but but it's because if I don't snap back, then I won't be productive. I'll crumble. I'll be burnt out, and I'll just be on auto- autopilot, like I have been from the ages of zero to twenty. Is that a squeak? I don't... This chair genuinely wasn't that... Sque- I'm telling you, I start filming and then there's noises. Like This chair was not squeaky. <clears throat> I went to the lake upstate with my friends uh, last week or some time ago. I don't know. And my friend was reading some tarot cards. And I asked her about, like, love and career. I think the question I asked her was, like, will I ever experience romantic love? And to both career and love questions, the essence of my readings were something along the lines of, like, something's blocking you and you need to get past something. And, hey, babe, the hard part was, like, get past what? Like, what is the thing I need to get past? Like, genuinely, baby, can you flip that card over and tell me what it is? Like, because what, what is it? What do I need to get past? Like, I don't know what I need to get past. Let me know. You let me know. Hmm. Um, we still need therapy really, really bad. (laughs) Really bad in like the craziest way ever. The craziest way ever. I look at that version of myself, I look at that girl, and I feel really bad for her. I feel a lot of things. I am my mother's child, and I'm very hard on myself, but I, I want to give her a hug. I'm, I'm glad she got through what she did, and she's the reason why I am where I am right now. Um, but it's like, damn... I feel really bad for her and I wish she could have gotten over whatever she was dealing with at the time and just, I suppose, lived life a little bit more. But I do forget that these are the times that I fantasize about and like, this is what I'm doing all for. I'm doing it all for living in the city of my dreams and living by myself and being financially independent blah 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 and like uh, chasing my dreams and like making community and my career and blah 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 blue so it's like i guess that's reassuring it's affirming that i'm down the right path in some way it's been it's been a rocky road it's been a slippery slope but we're here and i suppose that's all that matters when it comes to 
myself when I look back at myself and my mental health and blah 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 my, my, my coping mechanisms I think the one thing that I crave is a more consistent relationship with myself I have found consistency through over the winter with some routine well the same routine I should say and the same parentheses unhealthy habits but summertime has been anything but consistent for me I will self-destruct and I'll isolate and I'll binge and I'll neglect and I'll seek peace and happiness in like all of these vices and I'll do all that just to try to press eject and like cut everything cold turkey and like scrub and cleanse myself of the old me that was partaking in all of these like bad and nasty habits and whatever else but but more so just like trying to prematurely speed run or begin a healing process when it's not yet time and i'm just like i think i'm like i think i'm over that i think i really do crave being more aware and more present in my own body i saw this thing on tiktok like forever ago saying that like we exist in our bodies 24 7 but we're just not that oh like we're not that present and i something in that resonated with me so greatly and so deeply and i just want to be in tune enough to acknowledge if i'm headed towards a slippery slope whatever that means i feel like i'm being a little bit vague right now but whatever that means if i am leaning a little bit into isolative tendencies or or antisocial tendencies i want to be able to know how to calmly and effectively acknowledge that and then correct and then pivot instead of trying to act like what i was doing or what i was engaging in just never really happened and then trying to you know trying to like wipe it all away because it's just like hey babe that just hey you've tried you're you tried it time and time again it does not work it really doesn't work there is a little excerpt i don't think that's really the word that we should use but i started watching madeline rg's podcast a few days ago it got recommended to my youtube channel and i think oddly enough one of the indicator is that like i'm doing well at least in the productive sector of my life is when i have kind of like things on as background noise because it means at least for me it means that i'm working like it helps me get into for some reason a very productive and effective flow state and i've been putting her stuff Is my Wi-Fi out? Oh, that would be glorious. That would be amazing. My Wi-Fi is in fact out. Unbeknownst to me. Little surprise. But I do have a cell phone with data. I pulled up uh, the video that I'm referencing right now. It's called Breakups and Self-Respects. I'm just going to let my girl explain this. It's like I tend to indulge in the worst thing ever and then grow from it astronomically deeply like i will sit in the bad feeling that the bad thing gave me for so long until i am so sure that i've learned every possible lesson from it when she said that it was like a part of my brain had been unlocked and i didn't realize how greatly i resonated with that when i have a bad feeling in any way shape or form i will sit in it for ever for far too long for as long as it takes, genuinely. I feel like I shouldn't be looking at this camera when I talk, but it's also like, hi, I like, I know you're still here. I just feel like it's weird when I'm like, look at it, whatever. I will sit in a bad feeling. Oh, one thing I know how to do is sit in a bad feeling, babe. I, I will sit in a bad feeling and I'll sit in it and I'll sit in it and I'll sit in it and I will introspect and I'll reflect and I will try to squeeze out every single lesson from that bad feeling and i will intellectualize my life away that ladies and gentlemen i know how to do like a pro and 
I'm kind of tired of doing that. I, the most kind of like recent episode or like bad feeling that was a little bit too prolonged that I had, I didn't really grow from it. I think I just indulged in that bad feeling for far too long. It wasn't even productive. I don't know if you can even call sitting in those kind of like doing that. I don't know if you can even call that productive. I really don't think that you can. And I think I subconsciously cared a lot more about getting laid off than I put on. Not because I like love that job, girl, fuck that job, I don't give a fuck. And I am glad now that even the content that I do with that brand, because I still do content with them, freelance, it's all, it's not on some quota, it's all, I run, okay, saying call the shots is kind of like crazy, but like, I don't do anything that I don't want to do. I don't, like, I don't do something because I'm trying to fulfill any managers or anyone's asks of me my it's up to my standards and my regulations and i can opt in i can opt out i can stop whenever i want which is great but i think as a young woman and as a person of color and as a black woman who had some kind of footing and some kind of career and some kind of standing in not only a career but corporate i think having that kind of like cease to exist especially abruptly like when my team and I got laid off like no literally no one saw it coming even my manager like she was literally like we, uh, I remember I had called her a few minutes after it happened and we were both literally in shock uh so kind of having that rug pulled out from under you it was jarring and it was disorienting and it definitely 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 Knocked me off course for a little bit longer than I want to admit. And I kind of didn't know what I had. I definitely wouldn't have quit. I did have my complaints, but I think all in all, I really did like corporate. And I don't think I'll ever find a job as, honestly, as easy as that one. The commute, the team, we had a small team. I didn't really like do much. (laughs) And I got paid sizably the brand found me from the videos that i was making on youtube i found it also serendipitous i was like first of all i would because i was i was looking for jobs in that social media content realm maybe not jobs but internships just to start off and dude i i found it so serendipitous and i was so excited and it was really validating and affirming to be seen by someone in like a professional sense i was like whoa (laughs) and uh i got promoted and it's why i got the job that i had very grateful i think that's like a very i I will say like those that like those are kind of slim Especially because, like, I was on LinkedIn for literally weeks, bro, like, looking for literally anything. And I think anyone who has braved this job market can attest to the fact that it's genuine hell out there. So, I was just looking back. Definitely, I had some regrets as to how getting laid off affected me. But also... I was very and am very, 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 very incredibly hashtag grateful. It's all about gratitude, guys. <laughs> hashtag gratitude. I think I kind of like moved on to like <laughs> this little update has been all over the place. But TLDR, me getting laid off, picked up a cycle of gluttony and apathy and spending money and bad habits and self loathing and self and self isolation and bad decisions that I flippantly um, labeled as my month of rest and relaxation. Dude, when I, I, I promise you, I only wanted it to last a month top, like two months tops. I wanted that behavior and that nonsense to only last until the beginning of spring. <laughs> but it lasted a little bit longer, babes. Yes, it did, it did, it did. And I have some pretty nasty souvenirs from it. I'm talking about credit card debt. Oh, well, I am considering the last seven months to just have not happened. The year for me starts now. 
So let's talk about a few of my New Year's resolutions. I want to be more present. I want to be more intentional. I want to be more brave. I want to be open with myself. I realize that I don't even know how to be more present with myself. I actually generally have no idea. I'll spend like solo days and I'll take myself out on dates and still not be present. When it's like no one else but me is present. Like how does that even, generally how does that work? I don't know, bro. But I'm kind of hopeful for winter. Knock on wood. And I only say I'm hopeful for winter. I know I said that in my other video, which was like kind of crazy. And I kind of shouldn't say that because I feel like I'm just jinxing myself at this point. But I only say I'm hopeful because now I know what, I now I know what my problem is. Okay? Now I'm aware to some extent. I didn't know what I was getting to before, but I'm aware now. I expatiated on some of the things that are bringing me happiness. Hashtag RN in my summer favorites video, but... There's also one more thing that's been keeping me, I don't know about happy, but just let's just say afloat. I talk about music, food, blah, 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 blah. I've been in kind of a hygiene and cleaning frenzy. So I saw this, I saw, whoa, I saw this TikTok about how some girl said that like ultimate clean girlism and like wellness and stuff like that is just like kind of like keeping up with your hygiene. And I agree to that greatly. But then I kept on watching and she said that like the ways that she's been upholding that is by shaving every day. Mm. Oh, oh, wow. Hey, babe, you've lost me tremendously. You lost me. You're like, you like I'm genuinely kind of lost and I don't know where I am now because that's crazy. And it's kind of sad. I'm like, I'm glad that's making you feel like a hashtag clean girl, girl. But like, it's really kind of sad when like these kind of practices that are supposed to make us feel good as women are kind of just shrouded in patriarchy because what do you mean that makes you feel clean body hair doesn't make you feel clean you don't feel clean without taking off your body hair and like mimicking the body and like structure of like a child <laughs> anyway spooky that's spooky however i saw another comment from a woman saying that like little practices just as like doing her laundry keeping her room clean and having her hair washed makes her feel so much better and i agree one million percent i've been in a frenzy because while generally obviously i keep my space and myself clean i'm very much someone who can fall victim to just kind of leaving a task idle for a, just a little bit too long and while I'm trying to operate in a space that is like a little bit dirty or messy or cluttered, I will be feeling more and more bad mentally. Like I, I genuinely will feel like dog shit. Well, yes, yeah, so I'll feel like dog shit. Um, and it's like, I'll wake up in a messy room or a messy apartment or my dishes in the sink or my trash smells because I need to take it out. And it makes me feel <laughs> worse. And uh, oh, also finally taking the time to decorate my room has made a tremendous effect in because i'm more incentivized to keep i'm more incentivized to keep my room clean and hey wow who would have thought it's like like i obviously wasn't i had no push in i wasn't incentivized when my room was like bare and it was like no one literally lived here it didn't feel like oh like a room someone was taking up it didn't feel special but it's like why did I, you're you're just realizing that now girl that is sad i know this isn't um I know this is like common sense, okay? I do know that. And so some people, what I'm saying may sound a little bit strange. Uh, but it's just like, it's so funny, like looking at other places to make you feel better mentally when it's like, hey, babe, make your bed in the morning. How about we try that? Make your bed. Wash your hair. Vacuum the crumbs off of your floor and your rug. Let's start there. Like... Uh, pick up off those pick those clothes up pick those clothes up off of the floor have a clean room so you can like inhabit and be in a clean space for like a few hours before you go to bed which i think is like one of the most crucial times of the day so you can finally so you can properly relax and decompress and feel like a person instead of waking up immediately anxious and like waking up in clutter with bare walls and they scattered on the floors and like dirty pillowcases and it's like oh my god 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 i know it it seems like the hardest thing in the world at times but it's like 
it makes a tremendous amount of makes a world of a difference i've been going above and beyond even with just like washing my hair because i have been going through a little bit of a rough path oh my god oh my god a rough patch lately and uh, in order to not slip into complete and utter madness i really need to have my environment be the absolute best condition that it can be like literally tip top shape I say this as someone who primarily wears protective styles. I have my full locks in right now. If you've seen any video from me ever, you know that I am a knotless braid war warrior. But I've been washing my hair like jet like sometimes twice a week. And if you don't have natural hair, you don't know that it is a little bit more of a tedious process. There's lots of people in the natural hair community who just don't wash their hair. Like when it's in a protective style. I've heard some things about like dirt making your hair grow. I think that's ludicrous but some people can get away with that uh i however was cursed with super sonic stinky sweaty scalp and i don't know about the rest of you guys but in this heat genuinely let two weeks go without me washing my hair unfortunately babe i am making it everyone's problem okay and don't let a relatively taller person than me hug me oh babe i'm so 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 sorry you hug me, you smell my scalp, you're getting a nose full of the chum bucket, okay? Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And it's just like, I don't know, like, I don't, clean scalp makes me feel so good, but it's also just kind of like, oof. unfortunately, I have been, I have been there a few times, I have been like fitted down, face beat, like fragrance, and I smell all good. And then my scalp will just be a little bit more stinky than it should be. Not lately, though. Because I have been washing my hair. I'm so normal. It's the little things. It's the little things that make me feel so good and whole and normal. I'm so normal, girl. Yes, I am. And I do not need a clonopin prescription at all. No, I don't. I get down on my hands and my knees and I clean my baseboards and my doors and like my bath mat. And I'll throw everything into the wash. And... It feels good. It feels good. My apartment doesn't have windows in the living room, which is so frustrating because it's like, it smells really, it's just it, like, it starts to smell a little bit more quicker and like, it's just like hot and muggy and like humid and funky in here. But I've been trying, dude. I really have been trying. You're not going to catch me. Okay. <laughs> Do, 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 do. Okay. Anyway, cut the cut the camera. Cut the cameras. Cut the cameras. Intermission. I have to. I I, I gotta take a big fat piss. Baby, we both know that the nights were mainly made for saying things that you gonna say tomorrow day. Girl, you may do. Hey guys, um, why didn't you tell me that I was looking crazy? Oh my god, you guys, you silly. No one informed me that uh, the glasses that I had on previously were sitting on my face. Hey guys, hey, not only crooked, but in a really crazy way. You silly Billy. I am um, sorry. I had to burp, and I am a lady. I, I I this is why I keep all of my accessories cheap, and it's like jewelry, any kind of accessory cheap. Because hey, man, I, I I'm trying to get this G7X to focus on me. It wants to focus on like my anything. You, <laughs> I went to see Arctic Monkeys last summer. No, not summer. Really, I, actually, that's not true. Last summer for their tour, they went. They came to Forestville's, 
Forest Hills in Queens, and they kept showing. Okay, so it's like so I was actually talking actually. Oh, uh, they kept showing like uh, Alex's hands as he was playing the guitar, and I found it literally pornographic. I was like, please, please, please stop! Like this is supposed to be, like I'm sure children are present. Please stop this. Let's get back to the subjects at hand, the topics that lie in Jess Land. I've been thinking a lot about the concept of romantic love. It started around the time of Valentine's Day and I just kind of wrote it off as Valentine's Day-esque or adjacent feelings. But these thoughts stuck and I think the primary reason is because I've never felt romantic love. I don't know what it's supposed to feel like, what it's supposed to taste like, what it's supposed to sound like, what it's supposed to look like. I literally have no idea, babes. But i think it's also because i think like descriptions of it and everything in the realm of romantic love comes across as incredibly foreign to me incredibly foreign and i have a hard time quite honestly grasping it like what does it mean to fall in love with like what does it mean when someone to like i want oh, like i'm falling in love with this person what does that mean or maybe even just when like you're in love with someone what does that mean like what boundaries what i guess like stipulate like what what genuinely what is it what is it what is all of it and like every single concept or construct or whatever i think what makes these things so sticky icky wicky and a little bit hard to conceptualize is that love has a different like definition for everyone i think it's obviously all very subjective what you would consider to be an adequate depiction or portrayal of love or falling in love or whatever could not cut it for me what i consider to be that may not it may not be the same for you it could be not enough it could be too much who knows but every time I get together with one of my friends who's much more well-versed in dating or the love scene than I am, I treat part of our conversations like field research. They're quite literally field research and I am conducting field notes tr- because, because I'm genuinely trying to, to, understood, to understand and sometimes I'm just so curious as to what romantic love means and uh, how it possesses I don't know, like these things that seemingly drive a person to be able to do anything or to feel something so greatly for someone. I may sound like a freak here. Maybe I'm the freak, maybe I'm the weirdo, but I just don't get it. Although, gun to my head, if you had to ask me for a definition of what it means to love or be loved, romantically, of course, I would say to love is to be seen. To be seen and to be understood and it's a definition that is a little bit while it is short and sweet it surprisingly makes a lot of sense to me uh but when i when you read literature or media or whatever about love it kind of describes it as this thing that's like instantaneous it's like passionate it's instantaneous you feel it immediately and it's this thing that like just over overcomes and overtakes any sensibilities that you have and you are just like ridden by you're overridden by not only like this lust and passion but like this admiration and this desire to that you would do anything for this person and while that i can't really say whether or not that speaks to me i genuinely do not know i don't really think that's a definition that speaks to me that much i would think so because uh, romantic love to me at least seems to be something that's like very intense and very serious and it takes time it takes that takes time like to me to me to me to me we can't get there or anywhere near there to that like super passionate like you want to talk about me wanting i could do i could do anything for (laughs) and for someone are you joking anything 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 if we are talking about getting there in any way shape or form that takes 
that's gonna take a lot of time i think if i started dating someone even just, and it's been like three months even like six months even if we've been seeing each other consistently like very very frequently multiple times a week and it like it gives we're truly for like a better words locked in if they came to me and they were like anything less than six months they're like i'm in love with you i would genuinely laugh in their face i'd be like <laughs> no you're not no say that shit again like <laughs> genuinely because what do you mean what do you what 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 do you what do you, what do you mean quickly i think we'd almost kind of like get in a fight because i'd be like what are you talking about what do you mean you're in love with me? Don't piss me off. <laughs> I'd burst into laughter. I'm not joking. I have friends who've known me, friends, acquaintances who've known me for a year who I really, I, I, I really can't even say that they know me fully yet. Um, but now that I am hearing all of this out loud, maybe I'm the problem. Maybe love doesn't have to be this thing that's super complicated. Maybe I'm the freak and the weirdo. I've been listen. I recently listened to Madeline RG's podcast episode with Central C. She broke down all of the drama with Ice Spice. Ice Spice TikTok free page buzzword, buzzword, buzzword. YouTube uh, bring people, bring bring people here. I love listening to vapid white women were vomiting about their escapades with men who do horrible things to them. Although I don't think Madeline is vapid. I mentioned it earlier, but I do find her to be quite funny and su- and surprisingly profound. I had a dream, this is totally off topic, but I had a dream that I was a rapper girlfriend and I blew up. I can do that, no joke, I'm not kidding. I can lean into rapper girl, I I can do it. I was thinking Kyle Rich, although I think he's like 20, which that would be kind of gross, but we could have a great time together. Kyle's team call me, we can make some shit shake. People would be like, um, she's not a baddie, she doesn't lay her edges, she doesn't have a fat ass, what on earth does he see with her? and our relationship would be would stand the test of time talk about juxtap talk about an unlikely pair seriously hey kyle once again kyle it has to be a notable rapper though i'm not gonna like date some nobody um could be a mutual beneficial relationship call me we can let's hey let's talk let's make some movie magic anyway uh this is also another tangent but I've been getting too much, like, mainstream TikTok content. I'm gonna, okay, I'm gonna, like, for example, this conversation with, like, the conversation with Cody Ko and then, like, Brooks Schofield and Clinton Kane. Those, those are not, those are not real names. But, um, I wrote a little note here that my little side tangent with white women talking about how men do them dirty is that when it comes to Clinton Kane, Clinton Kane or any of these dudes, we need to start being objectively more mean about these men's looks, i.e., calling them ugly. Someone is Tokyo drifting outside. Calling them ugly. Call these men what they are, which is fucking ugly. I'm not talking about on the inside. I'm not talking about like, oh, they do bad things, so they're ugly on the inside. I'm talking about that. I'm talking about fucking ugly. Fugly. Since. I was practically force fed, spoon fed a seven, eight part nine saga on fucking Brooke Schofield and this magical man who came out of nowhere, Clinton Kane. I was, I became well informed on like what this man did. And one day on TikTok, I received no joke, I'm not kidding, no less than 20 TikToks from. A bunch of conventionally attractive, thin white women who can who kind of just all look the same between the ages of eighteen and twenty five, showing coming out of the woodwork with screenshots and voice recordings and da la 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 of Clinton Kane in their DMs, tapping in lowercase and speaking like a fourteen year old girl, going like hi hi hi, and offering to fly these girls out and like just speaking in a very fucking lame ass manner, and. I think this comes from like not caring about whether or not I look like a bad person, but there is not a word that's powerful enough to describe how I feel about men like that. Like gross is not the word. Disrespect is not the word. Like repulse is not the word there. They, they, they have not made the word in the English dictionary. I promise you that properly relays how I feel about men like that. 
Like, I, it, it, it's, it's not even fucking a loser. I think you're a fucking loser. I think you're pathetic. I think you're scum. I think you're nothing. I think you're... This is my Aries moon, but I'm my language tends to get a little bit violent. But... <laughs> huh. Because you're just, like, essentially copying and pasting this lame-ass prompt to get to women who look the same. These, these, these lookalikes to try to, like, fuck them because... What, you have some kind of notoriety that comes from being a subpar slash adequate slash kind of shitty singer-songwriter? It's so lame, dude. Oh, it's so lame. Um, yeah, that's a tangent, but, like, that man is... Je- like, when I saw that, the first thing I thought wasn't even, like, oh, my God, like, how could I do that? Because, like, wow, a man cheats on a woman. A man does a bad thing. A man m- lies and emotionally manipulates. <laughs> shocker but it's like i was like wow this is genuinely one of the ugliest men i've ever seen in my life i'm not kidding he looks like a bleached drowned swollen puffy like rodent that it that man is classically trademark fugly i'm not i'm not kidding i was like oh he's hard on the eyes like i don't know why ugly people get away with doing bad things like oh you're not saying the pearly gate you're not seeing heaven i mean you lying about your mom dying hey chinikin i mean you're not saying heaven you're genuinely not um i <laughs> you're not seeing heaven not only are you ugly but you're a horrible fucking person you're lying on your mom on your mom on her death hell is hot and is coming waiting for you i don't even believe in hell but oh they're gonna manufacture one they're gonna make a man-made one just for you my friend um, anyway, yeah, start calling men fugly. Like, I'm not above coming for anyone's looks whatsoever. I'm so sorry. I don't give a fuck. But but call men ugly. They're ugly. You're ugly. You're ugly. Yes, you are. You're, you're ugly. You're fugly. Um, nothing more than that. No notes. That was such a big tantrum, but I'm sorry. I, 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 I had to get that out. <laughs> anyway, I've been thinking a lot about romantic love, and it's a little bit... It's been a little bit exacerbated by these white women who come on the internet and talk about how these men will do them so dirty. And the only kind of thing that I would take from it is what kind of emotion, like what comes over you, what concept, what construct comes over you or is powerful enough for anyone to like be treated this way. And I do know that like, at okay, I'm not a i'm not an idiot like i do understand that at a point like that is it no longer turns to love and it's just plain out abuse a uh, flat out abuse but i think my thing is i never really prioritize romance it could be classical conditioning from having very strict african parents but it's something it's, it's not something that I, I ever really prioritized my mom never gave me the birds and the bees talk she gave me the if you dare have sex with a man if you um, classic uh, uh like african word african mom verbiage if you open your legs for a man and i find out i.e meaning that you get pregnant don't even bother coming to back to this house like i'm not raising a child you can go live with your baby daddy like i'll disown you that kind of conversation been there done that and so i think the fear of man was really hey genuinely guys put into my heart but I think at a certain point and very quickly that fear kind of morphed into pure and utter apathy. Like I didn't give a fuck. I don't, I, 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 I didn't care. We don't care. We don't care. I didn't care. I didn't care because one, I didn't care. And two, also, I didn't really, my desire, my intrigue, this mystique wasn't strong enough for me to sneak around and go around my parents back i was like i don't even care it genuinely was not worth it to me and three mm, I, people didn't really like me like no one really had a crush on me i first started getting male attention when i was 18 years old um which was interesting i had like a little anyway that's <laughs> um but i was like i was trying to be like a good kid and i was trying to focus on school and like college and like getting into college and like i was like not gonna happen absolutely not on my watch uh and (laughs) i didn't really care when i did start to care even just like the tiniest bit i think i was 19 years old from the ages of like 
19 and 22 which is what like when my brain was even a little bit willing and open to the idea of exploration and like dating and all that stuff uh unfortunately i entered something that is called ladies and gentlemen the worst depressive episode of my life it lasted two years and um i had bigger fish to fry i really didn't i really didn't give a fuck about dating and my day-to-day my priority uh just shifted to not harming myself (laughs) that and that's the tea and that's what i like to call tea ladies that is tea so I don't, it, the, the timing just has never been right but I also once again I never prioritized it like I just didn't really care I didn't care we don't care we don't care I also love to be alone I love to be alone I never really get FOMO I probably should have gotten FOMO I think that would have propelled me and like furthered me motivated me to go do something to further like to like date with people date people or just like not date but like explore romantic love uh and i'm not saying this i'm this isn't some like declaration or proclamation that i am opposed to love or romance in any way shape or form but unfortunately i just most of the time i I don't think it's something that i was meant to not experience i'm not saying i'm not worthy of love that's the opposite and i kind of have a really big head and i think that every single thing that is good and feels good should come my way but I don't think it was something that I personally was meant to prioritize. Like I'm not physically driven, sexually driven, emotional, outward, inward validation from anyone, men, women. It doesn't mean anything to me. It means nothing to me. <laughs> like I kind of don't, I, I kind of just don't care. I don't fucking, I, I don't fucking care. I don't fucking care. I don't care. And uh, I'm not saying this to kind of like gloat or flaunt it because I wish I did. I genuinely, I would, <laughs> I wish I did. I really do. I wish I did. When I was in the fifth grade, my teacher went on maternity, maternity leave and we got a, a very consistent rotation of just substitute teachers coming on. And I remember we were doing an exercise based on like the future and the assignment was to draw and write a little paragraph on our future like our families and stuff like that and i'm not kidding i drew and wrote a paragraph or i think maybe even two on me living with my brother and an an ambiguous looking like dog pet cat and then the substitute teacher comes behind me and she's like um hey jessica like what like what is this and i'm like what do you mean like this is this is my future and she was like, yeah, well, like the, uh, like the, like the assignment was to draw kind of like your family, like, like this isn't your family. And I go, what are you talking about? This is my brother. And we're going to just like chill in the house in the future. Like, we're just going to play and like hang out. And she was like, no, like, like your, fa- like your family, like, like kids, a husband. And I literally remember, I don't remember much because I block out my childhood. And I went. What are you talking about? <laughs> I was just, I was like, what? <laughs> I was like, this is my, I was literally like, this is my family. Like, duh. <laughs> and I think she kind of just gave up on me. Also, tangent, sorry, but the thing that was sticking out in my, uh, in this drawer, this little striped thing, it was not my undies. I was looking back at the footage. It's not my undies. It's a bra. And I just opened my underwear drawer for you to see, but so i think that just goes to show that genuinely i have never pictured my life or my future or any part of me long term with any kind of partner i just i don't i think it's quite frankly i don't want to share my life with someone in that way I don't want to. I don't want to grow with someone. I don't want someone to see me grow. <laughs> I see myself grow all all the time, every single day. And even for the parts that I don't really remember, I document it. I videotape it. I write about it. <laughs> I see myself grow and that's like sometimes like mo- that's too much sometimes. 
Why would I want someone else in on the whole? Why? But I want to want it. Do you see the problem here? I want to want it, at least in some capacity. I was talking to my friend Fraser and they asked me, I was complaining slash ranting and they asked me why I would even want these things, like why I would want to adhere to norms or to the status quo in this, in that way. And I was kind of like, huh? I was like, yeah, you're like, uh, I, I was like, why would I? But it's because it feels like I'm missing out at least to some extent. I want to be normal, okay? I want to be normal. I want to be normal, girl. I want to be normal, girl, pilled. I want to feel what you guys feel. Feel? I want to feel what you guys feel. Open up. Let me in. 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 You've shut me out of the doors for 25 years. Actually, not 25 years. I hate when when I hate when people are like, I've been single for, 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 for 21 years. Like, you start dating when you're an infant. I know it's like essentially hyperbolic speak, but I, I, oh, I hate that. I don't, it, it gets my, I, I, I hate it. Let me in. I won't stay long. Trust me. I don't want it like forever. Maybe like a year, two years. Let me, let me in. I also look at love. I would love to have like a muse. I think that's fun. I look at love or I think my desire to want to experience love in a very artistic artistic sense. I would love to experience it just to see like what I could create. I think introducing romantic love or a version of me that's experienced romantic love to like my videos and my writing. It's kind of awesome. Like imagine me broken up with. There's emotions, there's sides of me that haven't even been unlocked yet. Isn't that crazy? I think a lot of times as humans, we feel like we've felt every single emotion that we're ever going to feel. And it's just a series of feeling it again and again and again with different like levels and stages of intensity. But there's, that there's feelings I haven't even felt yet. That is lit boots. Can you imagine the version of me that's like been scorned by a lover? Could be fun. It's kind of lit. However, if there's one thing I have a surplus of, sh- of its shame. Uh, so unfortunately, I wouldn't even like do the thing that you do after a breakup and confide in my friends. I would just write and channel that energy into my writing, because I think it's embarrassing. Miss Guy Ferreira, what did she say? Everything is embarrassing. Yeah, she's right. In a media that I uh, like, I consumed like uh, a video that I made about four months ago. I talked about one song that feels like falling in love to me, and that song was "Must Be Dreaming" by Fru Fru. I love that song. In the last thirty minutes, not only do they feel like falling in love, whatever that could feel like in my head, that's what it feels like. It, it, it's genuinely such a euphoric song. It feels like heroin to me. <laughs> like, can I say that? Can I say that? Yeah. These are a few more songs that feel like falling in love, that like intense, passionate, like (laughs) Peppers by Lana Del Rey. I think that little like moment right before we go into the chorus of where she's like, I'm in love, cause I'm in love. Hands on your knees, Angelina Jolie. Hands on your knees, Angelina. That is. Ooh, ooh, that is so good. That's so good. I listen to that blast and I'm like, it's just so feminine. It's just so feminine. It's just so girl. La 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 la. Les choses de la vie by Philippe Sard. A very intense and emotional and just like beautiful instrumental. <laughs> hold on by the internet oh my days now that does that song does feel equal parts sensual as it does romantic it's just like ah, hey, hey. <laughs> is that you crazy hey. 
You crazy, you crazy, yeah, you crazy. Yeah, oh, oh my god. Sid's voice is also just like, yeah, like actually so gorgeous. Damn it. I'll show you You can what I need. I see you in my room. Oh! Oh wow. To say hello by the Marias, that one feels more like heartbreak, but it does feel like romantic love. Just a feeling by the Marias. Beautiful opening to an album. Feels like falling in love. Smooth by Minoy. Minoy? Mi- yeah, Minoy. Feels like a very, it feels like the early stages of falling in love. It feels like a very shy, bashful version of falling in love with someone. And two songs by Crush. Nun and Wua. Old Crush is, as the kids say, the goat. Or I should say, goaded. <laughs> also, I, I wrote a note here that it says I'm incredibly strict. I'm very strict. I'm very, I'm, I'm incredibly strict, as, at least when it comes to dating men. Oh, bro, I'm, I'm so strict, bro. I have a lot of deal breakers and a lot of red flags and little things that we it's like full stop like i don't care what kind of stage we're in we could be super locked in full stop party's over because i just think it's like the littlest things like habits and speech and characteristics and behavioral traits that symbolize and show so easily they reveal so easily like very deep-seated and intense misogyny and I do acknowledge that, like, as people, we do, we all have misogyny, men, women, any kind of gender identity alike. It's something that's definitely within all of us, and it's like an active fight and an active and intentional fight to try to unlearn that. But I think, obviously, we live in a patriarchy, and it is, or it should be something that's a lot more intentional and uh, and, uh, aggressive and for for men uh so yeah lots of things that even just like the slightest little i i think like behaviors are so telling i think a lot more women should be privy to these behaviors Uh, a lot of women just don't care which that's fine but i can't fuck with that fuck that if you use the word bitch in any way shape or form no if you watch porn I have a lot more red flags, if you will. But also, I say, I'm not saying these things to like, fla- like, like I'm some prize and to date me is some once in a lifetime chance that only a few. Pe- yeah, I, it, it's it, it doesn't give that in any way, shape, or form. Don't get me wrong, I'm full of myself, <laughs> but not in that, not in that aspect. I I don't even think a man would enjoy dating me. Honestly, I'm not even I'm not even saying this to be cute. I'm doing us all collectively a favor. Okay, let's just say that. This is also my opinion. Random opinion that I have uh, about romance, I suppose. This is an opinion that I've had ever since I've gained sentience. And it's not going to be an opinion that everyone loves. And I think that's okay. I wouldn't want to have any ideas or notions that everyone agrees with all the time. I think if you're saying everything that people like, you're not saying the right things. But I do believe that the person who you choose to, after the age of 21 years old, I think this is when it applies when dating becomes something that's a lot more serious. Like, because topics like cohabitation and marriage are now being discussed. And like the things that you work towards with, with a partner. But I think a partner is such a compliment and reflection of yourself. The person who you choose to call a partner and pray as your partner is such a reflection of you. So that being said, if your partner is a loser... So are you, I think. Sorry. If your partner is someone who treats you with no self-respect or with no consideration, I believe that is how you see yourself. That's what you allow for yourself. And it's unfortunate. I've met a lot of cool people who I meet their partners and they're cool as well. And I'm like, oh my gosh, this is so, so, so nice. These people, these two people compliment them, each, compliment each other so nicely. And it's really nice seeing two like-minded and alike and like genuinely good in a lot of aspects people come together and 
to pursue and further a romantic relationship. But then I see someone who I like and admire, and then I, I, and I meet their partner, and I'm like, oh. Oh. That's my tea. I have one last thing on romantic love here. I've just copied and pasted a lot of my random iPhone notes app blips here. I don't know what I wrote. Okay. This was around the time when the Please, Please, Please music video by Sabrina Carpenter had just came out. And apparently I felt so compelled that I wrote this. I said, Sabrina Carpenter must really love that man because she is incorporating him into almost every single aspect or facet of her music career slash celebrity persona. Granted, there are people who strongly, who strangely stand and genuinely enjoy when celebrity couples interact. So for some reason, they like it. And it's also doing great things for her publicity. But how is she not tired of showing us that stupid man? Like, I genuinely am tired of seeing him and I don't even follow her stuff like that. It's just getting shoved down my throat. And on Pride Month of all months, too, like, are you serious? Also, if I was a musical artist, music would be my baby that absolutely could not be polluted by the presence of someone whose eye message I will probably have blocked in 11 months' time. <laughs> like, is this all worth it to you for streams and virality? I really don't know who I'm addressing anymore. Am I speaking directly to Sabrina? Anyway, there is another option of her being in love and just enjoying herself and this entire thing. Which I also respect, even though the concept of romantic love and what it makes a human brain do is absolutely foreign to me. Hmm. Followed by ellipses. I have been... That's not on that. We're not going to expatiate on that. I've been watching... I've been making it my mission to watch not only the media that is deemed as like it girl media, but media that's loved by majority of white women. I've been making it my duty to see what all the hubbub is about. I've been watching Girls, and I really like the show. I will, like a whole, not analysis, but like a whole further commentary on Girls is coming soon. But, because I, 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 I just finished the entire show. I went through it very quickly, and I actually really like it more than I thought. But there is a character, Hannah, who's played by Lena Dunham, and she, uh, as the seasons go on, I think just like her life and her interpersonal relationships get a lot more serious, specifically with her parents. And I'm, uh, I don't want to spoil it. I'll try not to spoil it as much as I can, but like some stuff goes on with her parents and they end up splitting for a particular reason. And there's like a certain episode and like point in time when her mom is talking to her and she's like i'm alone i am alone i'm alone and that was such like that was so like spooky yuki because for the genuinely for the first time ever i was like oh my god i don't want to end up alone like that what i genuinely considered marriage i was like maybe that's that one is louder than they usually are the tracks are heavier oh oh thank god i forgot the j is down the j is down both weekends isn't that insane oh thank god i'm not going anywhere i'm not going oh <gasps> that's not true no, no no just the weekend i thought i was gonna be down i have to go to work that would suck balls Anyway, um, no, I was literally like, oh my gosh, should I get married? But I desperately don't want to get married. Ugh, I'd rather end up with a gun in my mouth. I don't want that for myself. <laughs> Yay! Oh, I knew that would happen. My hair literally got burned. Oh, I, I think I got that on video. <laughs> Oh, I wish you could smell what it smells like in here. See, that's my fault. I'm gonna take uh, the <laughs> my hair catching on fire and my SD card, my SD reader no longer working. And the one that I do have that's compatible, that's filming this, it's out of storage. I'm gonna take that as a sign to wrap this up and to blow this candle out. I think that we are in a friendship recession and 
what that means at least to me is that we are in a time where more people are seeing the importance but also the lack of community and platonic love and just how like strong platonic love and how necessary it is and i think this scarcity comes from not only people trying to navigate how to actually have a a proper adult friendships but i think it comes from social media and the fact that we're in a new age obviously a digital age and a new time and a lot of people engage in whether they realize it or not a lot of behaviors that are very antisocial and isolating i i'm right there with i'm right there as even though i am someone who has prioritized and for the most part only seen uh, platonic r- uh, relationships i struggle maybe even greater than you do i saw a comment on one uh it it was a comment from mina lee on one of her tiktoks saying that adult friendships are just based on whoever's schedule matches yours the best and i do think that is so true because i think adult friendships and how to strengthen them are contingent upon capacity to hang out actually on a regular basis but also the ability to do nothing during hangout like i do think that shows how comfortable you are with someone i also think it shows whether or not your friendship with someone has longevity whether whether or not you can just like sit in silence with someone true parallel play maybe you spent the entire day together you're on a trip together whatever and it's time to engage in nothing and just kind of play the quiet game for a little bit sorry it keeps sounding like i have thin doors so when my neighbors shut their door it sounds I'm already oh it's getting spooky quite frankly if i want to get closer to someone or strengthen our friendship or maybe even progress it past whatever it is i can't do that personally i can't do that if i only see the person every six weeks or every four weeks or we catch up over coffee or go out to eat or whatever that's classified as like a low maintenance friendship and i this is kind of ironic coming from me because i am the low maintenance queen and connoisseur but now that I'm growing older, I kind of realize that as we're all navigating adult friendships and like career relationships and everything like that, the friendships that are quote unquote low maintenance, they kind of don't stand the test of time. And maybe that's not true. Maybe some most of the time they can or they do, but they'll either devolve or they just like won't get past what they are they definitely won't strengthen that's for sure like you can't strengthen and like further like water a relationship if it just stays low maintenance that low maintenance that i know for sure and it's genuinely kind of difficult because i do have friends who just don't have the capacity to hang out with i I wrote here anyone but i kind of just mean me like twice a week or maybe even frequently or maybe even once a week because of life and work and needing time to yourself and maybe you have like a romantic partner that you want to pour into or maybe just even like other friends which i totally understand i do think it's kind of frustrating though when you're in a position that you want to build community or maybe you you want to strengthen a particular friendship with someone and i don't think there's any shame in wanting to do that to 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 express hey i like hanging out with you i want to further this friendship like and see each other more often i sent a very heated and emotional uh, text to my friends in the group chat one day about getting slotted and i'm not going to get too much too far into it primarily because i don't remember what i really said but what i think about what actually where's my phone what did i say okay sorry I'm reading the transcript on this video and I, okay, my gripe was that I was getting slotted hangouts and like times to hang out with certain friends and people that I was like really looking forward to. They would either get cut short, like abruptly being like, oh, I have until like 6.30 and it was 4.30 and people being like, oh, let's hang out from 2.30 to like 4.15 and it sucked because I'm not a person who 
can really feel the value or significance in a hangout with someone if it's just like two hours. I'm not saying I'm entitled to an entire morning or afternoon or evening of your time. Also, I was upset because subconsciously I was like, I would only slot someone if I wanted to see them, but just not that much. You know, like you want to hang out and you want to see someone, but not that much. You're not that inclined. You don't want to give them too much of your time. So you're like, oh, let's hang out from this to this but i have this at this time so it has to be cut short i still don't like being slotted i don't like it at all i'm a person who i don't like short hangouts i don't like if i have to go through a lot to slot someone a that subconsciously means i don't want to hang out with them that much and two if i really do want to hang out with you but there's no option just to slot then i we have to reschedule like i me personally i don't slot but I understand everyone's different I just had too much time on my hands I read I listened to that back the next day and I was like get a fucking job like girl indeed.com uh when I think about the friendships that I've had since moving to New York and the ones that have gotten really really close it's been through seeing my friend like seeing those friends often period point blank I have a friend Karen who we started hanging out who just would text me hey what are you doing tonight or hey what are you doing this weekend or hey are you busy and this one took me back at first because i'm not used to spontaneous or hangouts planned so closely especially because i'm the kind of person who it will i was the kind of person who i'd have to kind of mentally prepare myself to hang out with someone but i found it really refreshing because it signaled that i had a friend or just someone in my life who wanted to spend time with me and they had no problem communicating that and it in turn made me feel comfortable to do the same to them and also other people in my life. I know everyone has different schedules and things like that, but oh, this part was just kind of personal. Girl, this belonged in a journal. I'm not saying this part out loud. <laughs> it, but I will say it sucks when you have someone in your life who you admire or you like and you want to get closer with and you can kind of feel that it's not reciprocated, <laughs> which is okay, which is okay. Yeah, adult friendships just take way, way, way more intention. They take a a little bit more care. And when it comes to pouring into them, because it's different. It's it's different as to when we were in communities uh, and in spaces like high school and college, when you're quite literally surrounded by these people almost 24-7. When you're an adult, things are a little bit different geographically and emotionally and physically and mentally and every kind of ickly. And just as much as friendships need to be fostered and paid attention through through in person and in face to face communication, I realized that like friendship and hangout dates and friendships what what whoa whoa whoa, whoa, whoa cut, run it back like hangouts and friendship dates. It's also important sometimes to even catch up through text or exchange messages or letters or memes through social media like Instagram DMs something like that. I learned that greatly through my exchange friends. I never really was someone who like would catch up to social media, but I am now. I kind of, okay, this is, the rest is just you know, things, uh, blips of nonsense that I put in my iPhone notes app. I recently had a very brief uh, stint working retail in New York City and it wasn't the retail that made it so awful. It was that it was in Soho. Girl, what the fuck were you thinking working in Soho? I felt so compelled by New York City's recent wa- uh, heat wave, or f- for whatever reason, to tell you, this is for a specific demographic. However, when you don't scrub your skin, when you don't exfoliate and properly wash your skin, especially in the summer, we can tell. We can tell. I can smell it. I can smell it. I can smell it the second you walk in. I unfortunately get to perceive it in 4K the second you get close to me and like inquire about a piece of clothing. And... It's such a distinct smell. Like, it's not B.O., it's not must, but it specifically s- smells like stale skin. Like, it smells like stale dried sweat onto newly, freshly sweat tea skin. And it's mixed with, like, a little bit of white dog, wet dog. Sorry, sorry, I'm sorry. We, we had to say it. it was just, like, a little bit of wet dog, my love. La, la. Just like a little bit. I'm sorry, sorry. This is not a targeted message, even though there is a specific demographic of people who are borderline proud of not scrubbing their skin. They don't wash their legs, no loofah, no gloves. They barely even use their hands. They just let the water run down. I hear spooky. Whatever the case may be. 
the point is that uh, I can smell the Pilates on. I can smell the Pilates. I can smell the hot yoga. I can smell the filth and grime resting under that light layer of your method peony and rosewaddy, rosewaddy, rose water body wash that you have lightly graced on your skin. It's nefarious. It's a nefarious combo. It's really not good. Beautiful girls, fine girls with a full face of makeup, super fashionable, and fat pockets walking around Soho, and you stink. You smell. Oh, no. Oh, no. You're walking around smelling like wet pennies and sea salt. That is crazy. That's crazy. I fucking hate mukbang content. I hate it. I hate it. Oh, I feel so strong. I gen- I genuinely really hate it. What I do, ro- I, okay, I rock with the eating shows. I like the older, like, Asian mukbangers uh, who would eat, like, they'd get, like, the 10 pounds of, like, mom's touch. Oh, I miss mom's touch so bad. And they'd get, like, fried chicken and they'd dip in, like, cheese sauce. And they'd eat very, like, politely and cleanly. That is also just, like, very indicative of, like, Asian culture. Like, you do things, like, very properly and cleanly. I like that. Like, I like those people. I like those girls. Oh, my God. The, 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 uh, the wing stop and then, and then the cane sauce and then, the, and then you coming into, into the mic. And then, oh, when there's sauce dripping down your mouth, you're disgusting and you're going to hell. You're nasty and you're going to hell. And I know what you're doing. I know what you're doing. It's fetish content. I'm not an idiot. I can I know fetish content when I see it and I know what that is. It pisses me off so bad. It's so nasty. And it's like pretty girls too, just just in, in TikTok in camera. Ooh, 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 sauce coming down your face. Hey, that's disgusting. Have some decorum and have some class. You're classless. White people saying Pookie is so annoying. Uh taking on words like unk, pookie, whatever. Uh, AAVE colloquialisms and slang when you don't know how to use it is kind of hilarious. There was a recent exchange on Twitter with uh, Teffy and Drew Follow. They were going back and forth with Pearl. And I like Teffy. I like Teffy. I think she's gorgeous and like so full of wisdom. But I think uh, one of the tweets that blew up that she was, she like quoted something about Pearl and she was like, You want to talk about looks? We can go bar for bar. Not exactly the right context he used that in. Like, that's just so close yet not quite i think what grinds my gears about it is because like it's just people's total disregard for a like language system but it's also like i don't use words that i don't i don't use words that i don't know i don't care if it makes me sound cool or i'm not using a word if i don't know the context that it's used in some like i I, i'm not using a slang if i don't really know how to use it and i think people are really like brave with AVE, like you're 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 spitting on it. You're abusing it. You're disregarding it. Even something as simple as like like dab, like dab dab versus dap. Hey, you're not dabbing up tens. You're dapping up tens to dap someone up. D A P, not D A B. E D T. Andrea from Love Island is like a six five light skin man in the fact that. That is just that is a girl who is obviously has like pretty girl syndrome, and she doesn't have a personality. She is not funny or engaging in any way, shape, or form, and um, it's really I. Sh- Bro, all of my shit is literally dying. This is how I know I need to wrap it up and go to bed expeditiously. Andrea from Love Island is like a six five light skinned man, and the fact that she has no personality, she is not funny or engaging in any way, shape, or form. I'm not saying this to be mean, but it's just very obvious that. That is a girl who is a very beautiful girl, and she is cursed, not cursed, but she has pretty girl syndrome, meaning that she doesn't need to be funny or engaging, and it's really kind of strange and, like, disorienting to see, like, funny girl be cringe. Okay, I know I said that I don't believe that women can be cringe, or that or that people that, or, or, or people that can be cringe, things don't make me cringe, but objectively cringy like objectively cringy and it's also very apparent that she left love island uh uh, knowing that like there'd be a lot of traction and like eyes on her after because she was a bombshell then she went home and what have you and she wanted to monetize off of that a little bit by 
posting more and having some kind of social media platform but i don't know why she didn't pivot and just go like pretty girl influencer right like babe if you just kind of like shut your mouth about rob and leah and whatever else and you leaned into quite literally like pretty influencer get ready with me nighttime routine vlog content the girls would have loved you and you could have been even somewhat somewhat of an it girl i don't like it's it, it, like seeing people's humor is so oh my goodness like what hey all i'll say is you pretty pretty girl like thank god you're a pretty girl because it's like resorting to 2012 humor is genuinely something that is ooh, ooh wow like food coma content like food baby food gut food coma content is crazy in the year of 2024 but what do i know um rob from love island is very scary because he reminds me of a young man who i went to high school with who i had in my horticulture class who was flat out racist he was a trump supporter and he was very very country i went to school with a lot of country people but he also had a secret fetish and love for black women i'm not i'm not gonna say that part but nothing to do with me oh nothing to do with me child and um here he reminds me so eerily of that man i'm gonna say his name who cares his name was jake and jake or jacob i'm sure that man has like two kids a wife now and he hates his life but i think the same like cadence that like dead behind the eyes nothing really makes him happy hollow shell of a man that scares me and i see a lot of that in rob um I don't see why people are calling him. I'm not going to get into Love Island, but people are calling Rob like a good guy. Classic manipulator. Like, we, you guys, you have to see when these men who are, like, genuinely hollow shells, they come on and they just, like, treat people, I'm talking about women, poorly. So for that reason, um, yeah, Rob is genuinely a very terrifying figure to me. Although I will say him in that heart rate challenge... Hmm. but the very last thing i wrote here is i'm on my period and i want wing stop that was a feeling that was fleeting and is now gone i think wing stop while it is delicious when it's cooked right the last wing stop i got i door dashed it and or i uber eats it and the wings were like genuinely stale and like that pit Ooh, when you have like post delivery regret bruh um wing stop is delicious when it's cooked right but after you i finish eating it i feel disgusting and i want no parts and even like the smell gets me nauseous and period craving that very quickly came and went ladies and gentlemen that is episode two of the podcast that is not a podcast this was kind of all over the place i need to buy more sd cards and an operating sd card card reader we now know that thank you for watching this this has been jess once again, if you forgot, I'm 25 years old. I have a big fat, big fat balls, big fat. Grease mask, punch, grease mask in the penis. <laughs>